Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern, Ned Reynolds, back in the studio on a Monday morning. So I watched a little bit of the uh, PGA over the weekend, especially yesterday when it was just dark and gloomy and cold here. And I'm flipping on the TV and it looks just absolutely gorgeous in Tulsa. Go figure, right? Well, what would you, uh, you think about it? You know, for a, for a match without Tiger Woods in it, it was very compelling. Compelling because of the way it ended and the stretch run by Justin Thomas. There was a, I didn't watch all of it, but there was a point, oh, I want to say maybe 2 o'clock, 2.30, somewhere around there, where Thomas rolled home a, oh, probably 25 or 30 foot birdie putt. And Jim Nance, who's a really outstanding broadcaster, says, that's a great putt, puts him three under, still trails by four, but you know, that may be significant in the stretch. Darned if it wasn't. Justin Thomas comes from seven strokes down to force a tie at the end of regulation with Will Zalatoris, who never could put it away. They went to overtime, three holes of overtime, and on the third hole, consecutive birdies for uh, Justin Thomas, who's a newcomer, yes, but he's a guy who's won majors in the past, and he wins it. He wins the PGA Championship. It's a great victory for Thomas, a record-setting one, because it's the all-time greatest comeback on a final round that a golfer's ever had in the PGA. And that's that's pretty doggone good. So the major championship goes to Justin Thomas. Tough luck for Will Zalatoris, but he probably learned from all this. The key is, though, this is the, this is the emergence of the young bucks mm-hmm. now on the tour. Yep. A lot of the old names aren't there anymore. Yep, and uh, it's good to see them uh, doing so well. But, yeah, I, I saw a little bit of that comeback, and it was just unbelievable. He got on fire, man. I mean, just had one hell of a day, and that's sometimes what happens in the game of golf. Who's ever hottest. All right. Uh, you know, speaking of hot and cold, uh, St. Louis Blues, man, going into the weekend, I thought uh, we're going to get a dub. And then yesterday, or excuse me, Saturday, I'm uh, watching a movie with my wife and kind of going in between the game on my phone. And then I'm like, oh, we might have it. And then I look back and I'm like, nope, it's over. <laughs> Did not uh, show up uh, in St. Louis over well, the weekend. Well, the 5-2 to two final score is a little misleading because goal number five was an empty net goal. For the, uh, I'll tell you what I do find encouraging for the Blues is they are limiting the amount of shots that Colorado takes on goal. Colorado had, I believe it was 30, 33 shots on goal in their game Saturday. And the Blues, who now are missing their starting goalie, as at least we assume so, Bennington had to leave the game with an injury very early on. And as a result, the Colorado Avalanche came on and won the game 5-2. to two. So that puts Colorado up. Uh, two games to one. Tonight's game is extremely important. Can't go back to Denver in a three-to-one deficit. No, that's, that's sir. That's not going to work. Now, having said that, this is a little history because against the Minnesota Wild, the Blues were down two games to one and came back to win four straight and, and gain round two of the Stanley Cup playoffs. But the Colorado Avalanche are pretty good. Big game for the Blues tonight. They'll play in St. Louis. Go Blues. Hopefully they can get it. I'm staying up late to watch that game. Last but not least, the uh, Missouri Valley uh, Baseball Tournament is at Hammonds Field this week in town, right? Hopefully the weather holds for this thing. (laughs) Judging by the forecast, we're going to get some rain early on. Well, it does. It begins tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon, Missouri State will play in the first game. And that's kind of a key in a negative way, too, Mike, because this is the play-in round that all teams wanted to avoid. Well, there are four teams in the playoff round, and the Bears will play Illinois State at 1.30 tomorrow afternoon. That's the opening game. Second game at 5.30 matches Valparaiso and Indiana State. What's the difference between the first round, the play-in round, and the rest of the tournament? Well, starting Wednesday, if you get there, it's double elimination. Play-in round is not. One loss, sayonara. Bears did not have a good weekend up in Peoria. They got shelled in two of the games. But th- th- those things happen, and we'll see what happens. This is not one of the great Bears teams. We've had a lot of injuries, but this is uh, still a resilient ball club. Really, I hope everybody's out to see the game tomorrow afternoon, 1.30. Weather could be a problem. We'll find that out. This is not a weather program. <laughs> we'll yeah, I happens. don't want to be Debbie Downer on your parade, but it's not looking too good for uh, baseball tomorrow. Might be a little bit wet. Though. The winner of this tournament, and that'll be decided this coming weekend, Memorial Day weekend, is the Missouri Valley representative in the NCAA National Tournament. That's a big deal. Cardinals, the Royals, and the Springfield Cardinals all had games on Sunday. 
Did they all get the wins? Cardinals, well, not all of them, but the Cardinals, uh, interestingly enough, put their game away with six runs in the second inning. They're, thank goodness for the Pittsburgh Pirates because the Cardinals blow their blow them out every time they play. The final score yesterday was 18-4. to And how much of a blowout? Yadier Molina pitched the ninth inning of this game, and he warmed up by throwing to Albert Pujols. Pujols played in the game and hit two home runs. He now has four for the year. He still is behind. He has 21 to go to hit 700 home runs, and that's an epic mark. I think it's doable. Maybe. We'll see what happens. But he did hit two against some really bad Pittsburgh pitching yesterday. Anyway, bottom line is this. 18-4, Cardinals win. Come home tonight uh, to St. Louis and play the Toronto Blue Jays, who are not the Pittsburgh Pirates. And the Cardinals, it's just a, it's a magic formula for them because they, they just slaughter this team every time they play them. The Minnesota Twins came from behind with two runs in the ninth inning, beat the Royals yesterday 7-6, and the Springbirds, Springfield Cardinals, fell to the Wichita wind surge 2-1 over in Wichita. Springfield's off today, then heads down to Tulsa for a series with the Tulsa Drillers. That's the Los Angeles Dodgers Farm Club. Before they come home next week, I still think they're going to come around and play a little bit better baseball. They definitely need to. They've got, uh, they're have got almost at the halfway point of the season. When do they come back in town for their next homestand? A Tuesday a week. Yeah. Not this coming Tuesday. The Valley Tournament's here. Mm-hmm. But then next Tuesday, they start a home series with the Trabs, the Arkansas Trabs. Awesome. Always a good one. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, get the rain out of here by oh, then. I hope so. All right, uh, so uh, Indy's coming up, obviously, with Memorial Day weekend coming up. Pole qualifying happened. What was the result of that? It's very interesting because the guy who sat on the pole last year will sit on the pole again this year. Scott Dixon, he's a veteran Indy-style driver from New Zealand. And Mike, his qualifying speed yesterday, an all-time record, 234 miles an hour, 234.046. That's, that's trucking. You're going pretty fast, but that's the case around that four-and-a-half-mile track. The pole sitting is decided in a bit of a different formula at Indianapolis. They have the qualifying for the whole field on Saturday, and positions 12 through 33 or 33 starting drivers. 12 through 33 are decided on Saturday. Then the top 12 all compete for the pole on Sunday. And Dixon at 234, Alex Pelu is with him in the middle part of the front row. And a guy, and I love this, Rhinus VK. He's a kid. He's from the Netherlands, Rhinus VK. VK is what he calls himself. That's an anglicized version of his Dutch name. He says, if I'm going to be driving in America, the media wants to make it easy, that's what I'm going to call myself, since he's on the outside of the front row in Indy. What's his full name? You know it? It's, it's Dutch, and it's very difficult to pronounce. Ah, uh, <laughs> come on. All right, well, I was going to try and get you to do it, but also uh, talking about fast driving, Ned, I've seen you drive that fast down Glenstone. I don't know, oh, yeah. what, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, speaking of uh, Ned uh, flying through red lights, what? Uh, who won the uh, NASCAR All-Star races this weekend? They were, there were two of them. They have the All-Star Open. This is at the uh, Texas Motor Speedway in Fort Worth, and it's a big deal. Uh, they have the All-Star Open, which was won by Daniel Suarez is in consecutive events on Sunday night. And then the All-Star uh, race itself, that's for the cup drivers, and Ryan Blaney won that one. These are good, competitive, solid races. Big crowd on hand to see the two of them, but Suarez and Blaney were the two two winners. Let's go, man. A lot of stuff coming up this weekend, and once we get through a couple of days of cold rain, I think it's going to be a gorgeous, gorgeous Memorial Day weekend filled with every sport you could think of. Ned, have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.